hits the fan and splatters all over Batman. Come on, we only did that once. I didn't like it and we never did it again. The infamous Star Report is finally released to the public, hitting very much below the beltway, as the steamy details read like the Kama Sutra. Let me tell you something, those dot heads know more ways to screw each other than a room full of Jew lawyers. The sordid, disgusting acts described within the 445 pages stun the nation. And gives half of them big fat bonus. Meanwhile, on his never-ending mission to apologize to everyone in the nation individually, he meets with his cabinet, where he's rebuked by Donna Shalala. Hey, let's get something straight here, you dumpy troll. I'm still the president, and if you don't like the way I conduct my life, you can get your fat, warty ass the hell out. Later, at a prayer breakfast, he begs the forgiveness of everyone from whom he hasn't already asked for it. I have sinned, and I have repented. Are you happy? Can I eat now? Afterwards, he has a private, quiet, spiritual moment with his maker. Thanks a lot, God. Where the f*** are you when I need you? Yet through it all, he refuses to resign. Look, there's little kids out there who still want to be president just like me. Because they know they're going to get laid eight times a day. South Lawn. Art imitating life, or vice versa? It better not be, or I'll shoot myself. No need. I'm more than happy to do it for you. Oh, my God, children. The navigator done assimilated the president. <laughs> As you know, I'm a in the morning. Hi, everybody. Christopher the Marquis Russo. Yep. Oh, no. <laughs> and that reminds me of a song. Oh, God. Oh, God. Silver bells. Oh, don't do this. Silver bells. <laughs> it's Christmas time for the eye man. <laughs> Ring-a-ling. Hear them sing. <laughs> Hope this will be his last one. <laughs> if your radio sounds oh, no. funny in the morning, you're listening to Imus in the morning. They're not live, but Lana just takes her bill, you want to say. For crying out loud, you really got to get over yourself, I man. What's the matter? The wheels are about to come off this country. If you don't, I mean, yeah, if you don't get up. this thing straightened out, you better wake up. Who says you don't know how to rip it up anymore, I man? Sitting around 12 hours a day, drinking apple juice, watching Florida statutes get argued. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just, that's why I called Charles every two minutes. Hey, Charles, did you see that? <laughs> Out of here. <laughs> Let me tell you something, your mother. <laughs> you gotta tape this. Are you taping this? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> if your radio sounds funny in the morning, you're listening to Imus in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't have this. <laughs> Go out inside. <laughs> There's three thousand acres here. <laughs> Go walk around on one of them. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Hi, this is Tiki Barber from the New York Giants. A few months ago, I had just for you. And with reports every 20 minutes, Bob Eastler, WFAN 2020 Sports. Who will be college football's number one team? Find out tomorrow night when Oklahoma meets Florida State in the Orange Bowl. Our coverage begins right after the Knicks Celtics game here on The Fan. Sports Radio 66, WFAN New York. 521 on the fan. Let's check traffic. The fan highway patrol with Jennifer Fogarty. All right, Bob. Big mess in the Bronx on the westbound Cross Bronx Expressway. Just a solid line of traffic from the Bruckner. Hey, only in McDonald's. With reports every 20 minutes, I'm Sweeney Murdy, WFAN 2020 Sports. Listen for your chance to win Giants playoff tickets starting tomorrow with Susan and Jody and Mike and the Mad Dog here on The Fan. Sports Radio 66, WFAN New York. Coming up to 523, our first look at traffic this morning with the Van Alley Patrol. Here's Lori McNichol. Good morning, Sweeney. This report's brought to you. Uh, mostly sunny day, mid-30s. Tonight, clouding up a chance of flurries after midnight, the low in the mid-20s. Tomorrow, a chance of flurries in the morning, otherwise partly sunny mid-30s. It's 20 degrees right now at 34 minutes past the hour. My brother would be a great mayor. Definitely. Are there more Republicans or Democrats from Santa Fe in that county? The Green Party uh, has really appealed to the Indian voters, the Native American a, voters. My brother was a Democrat. He's now a Green Party member. That's his favorite color. Right. Did you know that? Yes, by the way, my brother's teeth are green. 
<laughs> Jan is underwear. There you got it. Jan is underwear. <laughs> <laughs> if you're radio sounds funny in the morning, you're listening to Imus in the morning. Good morning, Marilyn. Good morning, Mr. Imus. What's up, baby? Why are you on this reporter, Roxanne? Why wouldn't she call me for a reaction and run the mayor's comments by me? I'm sure that'll be in tomorrow's paper. I'm, I'm sure very easy to get a hold of. Mm -hmm. I try the radio station. And well, no, her. my well, well, because our the, our receptionist is eating Ben and Jerry's ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Does have time to answer the phone? Who <laughs> took my chunky monkey? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. had my name on that. Yeah. <laughs> I've been a cabbie on the graveyard shift for years. Patrick. Good morning, Patrick. Good morning, I'm in. This I'm a sports report is brought to you by SixFigureJobs.com, the premier career site for proven professionals. The Oklahoma Sooners are national champs after their 13-2 win over Florida State in the Orange Bowl last night. The Sooners win their seventh national title. Did you watch first. that game? Yes, I did. It was a good game. Well, no, I don't know what Cornhazard was talking about. It was good old-fashioned smash-mouth football. What was Cornhazard talking about? I don't about? know. Does he want to track meet out there? It's absurd. I don't, I don't know, know what he wanted. Well, as you can imagine, I'm in a surprise announcement on Tuesday of Jim Nance, his PMAC Sports Update Athlete of the Year 2000, has brought a flurry of emails and letters. Doris Kearns Goodwin wrote that, quote, your selection of NFL Today anchor was truly historic and unprecedented, adding, I don't think any of us quite yet knows where it will lead us. And finally, two-legged Fred Imus chimed in with a message on PMAC's voicemail, saying, quote, well, I picked Nance, didn't I? So, of course, it's a great choice. Well, for the record, PMAC left Fred a reply voicemail, Pol politely correcting the Nostradamus of New Mexico, whereupon Fred replied back, and I quote, Well, it's stupid. In fact, the whole idea sucks. Jim Nance's pregame show couldn't suck enough. And while we're at it, remind me to tell my brother to hurry up and get Mike Breen back. By the way, uh, I like Nance a lot, but that show on CBS is awful, that pregame show of theirs. Can you watch that? No, you can't. No, you no, cannot watch no, it. It is unwatchable. It's a little, it's a little tough to stomach at times. Oh man, I mean, with the Ditka and that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that hideous uh, Jerry Glanville, loudmouth, and the other two guys are just they're, they're nice guys, I guess. Randy Cross, the other guy, but they're big, awful. They're geeks. Buffoons. They're just geeks and losers. They're <laughs> awful. It's an awful show. But it's part of the whole Viacom situation. Well, yeah, but I mean, uh, we're going to change that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's they will problem. not be back next year. That, that will not like happen. There's some big changes in store there. We're not going to have that. We, we don't need to be humiliated like that. Well, uh -huh. you're making the decisions. No, but I have some input. Oh, yeah, yeah. what kind of input? Well, we'll see. Impact. Input. <laughs> you know, a lot of input. Impact Come input. On. Yeah, Let's three go. till the hour now. I miss in the morning. Attention, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. Long Island women, their lives and landed another in the hospital in critical condition. Awful story. Long Island Railroad train hit the car inside the crossing near Huntington shortly after 7 o'clock last night. Uh -huh. Shoved the automobile a quarter mile down the track before they could stop. Suffolk police say witnesses saw the car drive around the closed uh, railroad crossing gates. Mm -hmm. The famed announcer, who was the void... I mean, he's been totally emasculated. Yeah. He's a phony. Exactly. That's basically what he is. Making records about murdering his wife and all of that. Now he's back with her. And, of course, she was sticking her tongue down some clown's throat in a parking lot of some Detroit nightclub. And uh, Mr. M uh, pistol-whipped a guy who... Yeah. Apparently was took exception to it, right? But then still took her back, which seems just yeah. insane to me. And the guy's still uh, walking around as healthy as ever. Record of the year. Uh, here are some of the nominees: Destiny's Child with "Say My Name," Macy Gray is hideous, Madonna equally hideous, and Sync is "Bye Bye Bye," which I just, just I don't know. And you too, because you would think that you too would just that Bono would just go away, but they won't. And then the album of the year, uh, the Beck, Eminem, Radiohead, Paul Simon, and Steely Dan. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Steely Dan. Can, can he be far behind? Are they still alive? <laughs> I mean, best new artist, Shelby Lynn, Brad Paisley, Papa Roach. Oh, I'm just a best female pop vocal performance from Christina Aguilera, Macy Gray, Madonna. Oh. It's like a skank fest. <laughs> Britney Spears. Jeez. Best male pop Sorry. vocal performance. Mark Anthony. I, I like him. Henley. Ricky Martin. Sting, for God's sake. Oh, I mean, what? that's just, that's absurd. I mean, I don't even know. So, 
But the Grammys have, have gotten a little better. So, the American Music Awards, of course, are coming up, and we'll have Scotto will be backstage for all of that. Great, great. Um, uh, I don't know. There aren't best male rock vocal performance: David Bowie, Bob Dylan, Don Henley, Lenny Kravitz, and Nine Inch Nails. Those are the nominees. Hmm. Bob Dylan is exactly my age. So is Henley. <sighs> I don't get him. Best hard rock performance, Kid Rock, who I actually sort of like. And that moron from Limp Biscuit, well, Fred, uh, whatever his name is, Durst, I kind of like him. But, oh, it's just sad, you know. Uh, bon Jovi, best rock performance with duo or group with vocal. I mean, uh, this. Uh, and the Red Hot Chili Peppers, who are just so hideously annoying. That, <laughs> I mean... Make good music. Come on, yo. I guess. Um, what else? Not too much else. I mean, nothing else that jumps out at you. That best rap solo performance, Eminem nominated there. And... Uh, any Beefy Boys still around? God, that's that's unbelievable. Any black rappers get anything? With the dilly, yo. Well, yeah, Jay Z. Boy, DMX. Uh, yes. That's what I'm saying. DMX best rap solo performance. <laughs> My boy. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you, Nelly. How mine you know? <laughs> best male country vocal performance, Johnny Cash. <laughs> the fat Vince Gill, Good the hideously untalented Tim McGraw, and Dwight Yoakam, A Thousand Miles From Nowhere. Is that on his new album? Let me see. Did anybody not get a Grammy nomination? <laughs> yeah, but look at listen to the best country performance by a duo or group for country. Alabama. <laughs> Asleep at the Switch. Brooks and Dung. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm surprised Mike Wallace and his producer didn't get a nomination for that stupid thing they put on CD. For <laughs> <laughs> the singing senators. Everyone else is getting something. <laughs> Lauren Hatch, not on that list. That's right. John Ashcroft. Unbelievable. <laughs> Vocal by a group. Uh, unbelievable. I don't know. Just Johnny Cash. <laughs> Johnny Cash. And... Oh, my God. And Alabama. Steely Dan. <laughs> Reeling in the porcelana. <laughs> and Alabama, all of them look like they're right off of the evolution chart. Don't they? Yes, they do. Honest to God. Twelve minutes after the hour, well, I swore in a weasel yesterday in Washington, and uh, he'll cut to the head a little. She's a rich girl. She don't try to hide it. Diamonds on the soles of her shoes. He's a poor boy. Empty as a pocket. Empty as a pocket with nothing to lose. Sing ta na na. Ta na na. She got diamonds on the soles of her shoes. about Mohegan Sun now. They're giving away a car a day up there through January 27th. That's kind of amazing, isn't it? You, uh, it's easy to win. You just drop your entry into the drum located next to the Players Club promotion booth near the winter entrance, which is where you'll find uh, Fred's Auto Body Express store, incidentally. And each day, a lucky winner will get their pick of a new car or truck. New cars, over 3,000 slot machines, 192 table games, 20 dining options, a race book, awesome entertainment in the Wolf Den, and the friendliest, most courteous staff you'll ever run into. And now, incidentally, Mohegan Sun is featuring Imus Brothers Coffee 
in their terrific gourmet restaurants. It's all the Mohegan Sun way. Mohegan Sun, exit 79A, Interstate 395. They're in Uncasville, Connecticut. Mohegan Sun, wind, big wampum. This is a health care update from Hackensack University Medical Center. Part Drug addicts, essentially. Morons jacked up on steroids, lost a football game, in which he... And so, uh, and then my issue with him is that he's been very disloyal to Francesa, who was uh, helpful in, this guy was a listener of the radio station and wound up getting a job here, which is preposterous to start yeah. with. Yeah. So, and then Bernard uh, told me that he was uh, drunk, I guess, by his own admission. Yes. That uh, is correct. Christmas Eve. Yeah, as a result of this loss of the Jets and was in some drunken stupor and Dr drowning uh, his sorrows. Yeah. And uh, then somehow I was talking to Francesca yesterday, somehow Benigno interpreted this as my suggesting that he should be fired for being drunk, which is insane. He should be fired because he's a disloyal twerp. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> anyway, it's kind of a it's amusing just to poke him and get him all upset. Yeah. Because they all take us so seriously that it's just amusing for us. This is apparently some phone call they took the other night. Last Folks night. in Jackson Heights is on the fan. Good morning, Alex. Good morning, Joe. How are you, babe? Happy New Year. You too, brother. I uh, just want to say hello to the boys in the 115, Eric, Danny, Sully. I'm calling because uh, I was very disturbed by what I heard on the Don Imus show last night. The man berated you. He basically crucified you. He must have referred to you as with the word punk about ten times. And, uh, yeah, he accused you of being a Judas, basically, betraying uh, Francesca after he helped you get this job. And for this man to ridicule you and say that uh, he heard a rumor that you were drunk New Year's Eve, hey, if I love the Jets as much as you, I don't know if you were or you weren't, mm -hmm. and that's irrelevant to me, but if I was as fanatical lover of the Jets as, as you are, I would not only be drunk, I would have had a <laughs> bottle of J&B with my cornflakes and tried to buy a distillery the following day. You know, this man, Don Imus, by his own admission, on the air, he's an ex-addict and an ex-alcoholic. Where does he come off to have this thinking goal? to ridicule you and cast aspersions on your character, even if you were in a state of inebriation. I oh, just want to add one other thing more. I forgot to mention. And, I, and, and let me, let, up to him. And let me also say... up to him, Joe. He said you would be fired. Well... So I just hope he and Francesca don't conspire to get you axed. You know, look, if he said that, he said that. If they fire me tomorrow, you know, what are you going to do? You move on. You know, no matter what I'm doing, whether I'm selling food, whether I'm, you know, digging ditches, whether I'm, you know, cleaning garbage, or uh, whether I'm cleaning toilet bowls, I'm still always going to be a Jet fan. And as far as just to set the record straight for that, that Christmas Eve night, yeah, I was, I was bombed that night. I'll be the first. I admit it. I was. I absolutely was. At home, in the safety of my house, that's what I was, because I was very upset. And, yeah, it did ruin my Christmas. And maybe that makes me a nut. Maybe that makes me a whack job. Maybe that makes me a moron. Whatever you want to call me. Maybe I am. You am. Maybe I puked in my eggnog, slapped the old lady around, but I'm a diehard Jet fan, okay? I am what I am. I don't even know how you comment on that. <laughs> when these geniuses call Francesca Francesca. This moron. <laughs> yeah, I was last night was saying... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't even know how to respond to that. But it's good to get them stirred up. That's all we care about. Oh, yeah. Right. What do you say? Well, just to get them upset. Barrett's in a cage. Poke him. <laughs> We're going to try to get him fired. Hey, if they fire me, so be it. Well, why would they? Oh, God. He just he should be, well, he actually shouldn't be fired. But, no. You know. But he was disloyal to Francesca. He went over the line with Francesca, which is what I, I mean, Francesca. there is a line, and the guy is obviously not a professional, and nor a very <laughs> bright guy and doesn't understand. No, there's a there's a, there is a line. So, and he went over that line with Francesca. So. On the fan. <laughs> On the fan. So, and uh, you know, Mike's my friend. So, so is Russo. So, Mike, I would say well, I would be closer to Francesca than Russo. Although I'm moving close to Russo as well. More with Russo's family, actually. Very nice. As many people. problems as yeah. there are there, by the way. Yeah, but lovely people. His dad and mom are just. Uh, 
I mean, I don't want to go hang out with them, but they're very, very nice people. His dad is a... Yeah, what a whack job. And his mother's a <laughs> lovely woman. My wife, my Deirdre, said, well, well, why are these two people together? I said, I don't know. They've been together for 45 years. I don't know why they're still together. You're not going to change it Whatever now. got them together to start with, what the attraction yeah. was. But then they produced Mad Dog. That would be financial. Well, <laughs> why would that always be the attraction, Fuzzhead? When it, whenever it's inexplicable, <laughs> pretty much count on that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you're your such an idiot. <laughs> Jesus, God. Anyway... So, uh, Benigno, God. And here's the thing about Benigno. Uh, we invited him to do the sports on the program one morning, thinking uh, that being such a, a, a psychotic fan, um, that would be fun, you know. But it's not fun because he doesn't have a sense of humor. It ruined his Christmas. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I mean he's you know, he, at he, that he, level. So he... So you can't have any fun with him, you know. It's like all of the people here. There's some terrific people here at the radio station who, who, who take sports seriously, but also have a great sense of humor about it. Right. I mean, uh, Eric Spitz. Um, Keep it in a Minko. Uh, Russo. Russo. Uh, Fred, uh, oh, never mind. <laughs> I don't care if I end up cleaning buses, shining shoes. Bill Parcells could kiss my tush in Macy's window. <laughs> the two people after us, Jody McDonald and Susan... Uh, Sir, uh, Saranda. over Waldman. Walden. Walden. Right. I mean, they're nice people, but they're awful. I have no sense of humor, and they're awful. And, um... Uh, you know... You can always tell when people come back to my office complaining about... You know, like nobody likes Susan for some reason, right? Because she cops an attitude around it. What does she do? Well, she's the premier sportswoman at the station. Oh, I see. Come on, show some respect, yo. And um, so they, but they, so they, 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 they're unwilling to be lighthearted. Yeah, they're just they take this whole thing so seriously, and it's it's preposterous. I mean, it's. Well, I realize it doesn't have much interest to you, but it, 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 the only reason it interests us is because it torments them, and they go back screaming to Chernoff about <laughs> our program director about stuff I'm saying about them, in which they can't do anything. He didn't mean it. So. <laughs> He's doing stay. <laughs> and uh, yeah. if I were that kind of person, I could get them all fired, but I'm not, I've never done that, nor would I. But What did you say now? <laughs> Susan, it'll be all right. <laughs> it's a it really is kind of fun to do because they're, they're, none of them are that bright. That's one. No. That's not their fault. It's just a genetic thing. They're just not bright people. But they really do get, they really just get, to, to, they're just tormented and hysterical. You know, Susan and Jody aren't talking to each other. What did you say? <laughs> And every once in a while, Jody comes back to my office with some stupid joke. The next time he comes back, I'm going to shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> Wing him. <laughs> just graze him. Just, just, yeah. just get his attention. Just Have you way. heard those two? Yes. Oh, my Mid God. Ah. Jody and Susan. Oh, my fan. God. Oh, oh, my God. <clears throat> but they're, they're not bad. They're, I sh they're not bad people. And I'm by... Yeah. About half of what we're saying is, I'm not serious. So. But it, it does get them upset, and that's the only reason we say it, is to get them upset. And they fall for it, it all works. of the time. Every time. Every time they fall for it. And, um, so. Anyway, um, and of course, Susan forgets, and some of these others, that when they all got fired about 10, 12 years ago, I was the one who saved their jobs. That's right. So. Ingrates. No, well, I mean, they're just disgraceful where they are. That is the bottom line right there. <laughs> Good job. Joe Krill from Stairmaster. <laughs> on the fence. I got one of these Club Track 612 commercial duty treadmills yesterday. Yep. And I had it on, and Deirdre says, is it on? You can and I don't like my work, but I don't mind money. 
see lots of sad faces and lots of bad cases of folks with their backs to the wall. And I need four walls around me to hold my life, keep me from going straight. I need a honky-tonk angel to hold me tight To keep me from slipping away I miss in the morning Hi, this is Gary Cohen for 20, 20 Sports. The flagship station for the I miss in the morning show is The Fan. Sports Radio 66, WFAN, New York. To the morning program, Reverend Al Sharpton. At first, I got excited when President elect Bush proposed Paul O'Neill for Secretary of the Treasury. Seeing as how he's kind of confused in the first place, I assumed his choice was the New York Yankee right fielder. But of course, it's merely Alan Greenspan's friend, the aluminum foil guy. I suppose I should have known better. There won't be any surprises coming from a man who's invariably surprised as the door magically opens when he steps on the mat in front of the A.M.P. With a few exceptions, W's cabinet nominations are an outrage. Some of the nominees do make sense. Colin Powell and Condoleezza Rice are probably at the head of that list, although I can't help but think that their nominations are tainted slightly by tokenism. I mean, these two are about as black as Johnny Winter. Mel Martinez isn't such a bad choice for housing and urban development, seeing as how Cubans are so adept at fitting 35 people into a one-bedroom apartment. No, no, no. And Ann Veneman for agriculture? Well, one look at that woman, you immediately think, now there's something that certainly belongs on a farm. <laughs> but for the most part, the Bush cabinet should be known as the Bush League a ragtag group of political hacks that couldn't be vetted for membership in any self-respecting country club, let alone the highest offices of the United States. John Ashcroft as Attorney General? Hey, why not just pick David Duke? In England, the barristers wear white wigs on their heads. With Ashcroft as the country's highest lawyer, I wouldn't be surprised if counsel in America's courts take to wearing white sheets on theirs. He may have been responsible for Martin Luther King Day, but I suspect it had less to do with commemorating Dr. King than it had to do with getting another day off of work. And speaking of work, Linda Chavez. Well, let's just say that when it comes to labor issues, she ain't exactly Cesar Chavez. You ask me, there's something funny about a woman named Chavez who can speak Hebrew but don't know a word of Spanish. The girl must have something on the ball, because somehow, back in the Reagan days, she managed to work for Pat Buchanan, even though she was married to a Jewish man. Although disappointing, it is not surprising. Could one have expected anything different from a man who thinks that the Libya situation refers to a certain part of the female anatomy? Or when asked how many inaugural balls he planned to have, could very easily reply... He'll just go with the two he started out with. Reverend Al Sharpton here on the I Miss the Morning program at seven minutes after the hour. Well, we have some MSNBC news, and that is that uh, equal time with uh, Oliver North and Paul Begala is uh, history. Oh, I hate that. You hate that? Yeah. Did you ever watch it? Yes, I did. And? Well, I, thought it was pretty, I thought it was pretty good, but it had a bad time position, being opposite the other news. <laughs> well... The real news, the big boy news. I never could watch it. So. Oh, I like well, it. Need a little polishing, but. Uh, Needed a lot of polishing. I mean. The biggest handicap was which, what Charles just mentioned. Timing, timing. timing. Like going up against the Super Bowl. <clears throat> well, they just weren't very good. I mean, uh, they're okay. They're both nice guys and all that, but they just weren't very polished. And it just True. was tedious. And so, you, you know, it's just taking... I mean, they... People rolling behind. Ha! Good God. Need a big budded woman. Make me lose my mind. Lord, good God. Ha! Hit me. Big budded. Big budded. Ah, she can be all bad and nasty. I really don't care. Just don't give me no time. Jumbo underwear, Lord, good gold. Hey, 
Just sounds good. Are you proud of yourself? Coming up on 12 after the hour, Fred Imus and Sally Quinn coming up. Attention all your plays and fams right now in the place to be. Hey, hey. I thought I told y'all niggas before, y'all niggas can't go fuck with me. What? Now that's ain't fun, no small booties, no sir, cause that won't pass. Don't know what you're working with. If you feel you got the biggest one, the mama come shake your ass. Shake your ass, go watch yourself. Shake your ass, and show me what you're working with. Shake your ass, go watch yourself. Oh, man, that is just disgraceful. I don't mind. I mean, I'm ashamed of myself. <laughs> hey, uh, do you know your New Year's resolution? What? Do you know your resolution down there? do the better with it. You ain't going to hear that on the Today Show. <laughs> Well, if you're already a successful executive, then sixfigurejob.com is where your new year should begin. With sixfigurejob.com, you don't have to wait around for your next big move. You can make it happen yourself today. Sixfigurejob.com has thousands of high-paying jobs made available only to senior professionals like yourself. They're hardcore. All of the online tools and resources you need to keep yourself on the fast track. Sixfigurejob.com was designed by executives for executives, so they screen out all of the low-end jobs and useless clutter that drives you crazy on those other chump job sites. Stuff in banking, IT, commerce, sales, marketing, you know what I'm talking about here. So if the new year has a new career in store for you, check it out, sixfigurejobs.com. All right, now you know what they're doing up there at Mohegan Sun? Uh, exit seven minutes for the morning program, sponsored by your Tri-State Jeep dealer. Uh, the mayor, Reader's Digest of Mexico. Really? I didn't yeah. know he was assumed elective office. Well, wow. Deidre's a sheriff. Yeah. I'm the marshal of the territory. Yeah. And Fred Imus is the mayor of Reader's Digest of Mexico. I did not know that. Good morning, Mayor Imus. Good. Thank you very much. How are you doing this morning? Well, I'm all right. Apparently, uh, Bishop Egan, good morning, uh, Bishop Egan. Did. Good morning, the card blast. What is this? Hello, Mr. Mart. You can say goodbye to Bishop Egan, and hello to Cardinal Egan, be Jesus. Yeah. As this weekend, I, Mr. Marn, I finally become a made man in the Catholic Church, be Jesus. <laughs> That's right, a made man, I, Mr. Marn. Cardinal Egan, indeed, boy. You might wonder, so what the hell does it mean? I'll tell you what it means, I, Mr. Marn. It means I get to wear a bigger hat to have on, get all the free wine and wafers I want, unlim unlimited dental coverage, return calls from the Vatican, and a lovely emerald ring which the I men can kiss. <laughs> After he kisses me arse, you got to give me a debilitated dirt bike. Turn that music off, you little punk. I'll give you a kick in the teeth. <laughs> hey, Jesus. I don't think that's any way to talk to Lou Ruffino. Let Bishop me just Egan. say this, I, Mr. Marge. All right. <laughs> Let the arrest of that lunatic who attacked me during Mass at the cathedral be a lesson to the rest of you heathens, gays, or whatever out there with similar ideas. No matter what. No matter what, you can never beat the bishop in church. Uh, <laughs> Repeat, you cannot beat the bishop in church, eh, Mr. Marsh. Don't even try. Let me mind. just say this to those vicious homosexuals who reveled in the death of Cardinal O'Connor. Yeah. O'Connor's message to the gays was simple, eh, Mr. Marsh. <laughs> keep out the tushes. Just keep out the tushes, eh, Mr. Marsh. <laughs> Apologies to Reverend Jesse Jackass, by Jesus. <laughs> and what's this sick talk I hear, eh, Mr. Marsh, about the Amos Ranch? The, kid, the kids' bedrooms are right next to the i man's bedroom. What well, the hell is that? Well. Isn't that for you a bit like living next door to a liquor store, be you filthy pedophile, you? <laughs> and while we're at it, hey, Mr. Marr, let's do a little calculation. Let's set up the uh, the cost of a trip for the i man out to the stupid ranch. All right. Let's see. A fancy, limousine, a fancy limousine ride to and from the airport, $1,950. Right. $1, right. A private jet ride to New Mexico, $20,000. Right. What else? A ride on the i man's horse, Destiny. Priceless, be Jesus. You know, <laughs> Horse down effect, you smuck. You wake up. <laughs> I'm proud of you. You dumb bastard, you. <laughs> well, I'm Mr. Hard. Yeah. <laughs> I made that work. <laughs> that worked great. <laughs> With, oh, God, this is awful. Uh, this well, I'm Mr. Hard. Good, yeah. job. Good job, Warner. <laughs> With 15 long days before the man from Hope goes home to New York or some damn place, yeah. word comes that the soon to be former president might host a TV talk show. In fact, rumor has it that MSNBC is prepared to cancel Hardball with Chris Matthews and in its place put Hornball with Bill Clinton, be Jesus. <laughs> but here's my question, eh, Mr. Marge. Sure. Can Chelsea Clinton actually speak, be Jesus? Inquiring minds want to know. She comes across as the mute and pen and teller to her magician mother and father, be Jesus. <laughs> you have expect if you ask her a question, she'll whip out a horn and start blowing it like Harpo Marx or some damn thing, be Jesus. Speak up. <laughs> <laughs> and I did find out, hey, Mr. Marge, why Yasser Arafat's wife did not travel... 
<laughs> Traveled with him to Washington, D.C. last Tuesday, eh, Mr. Barr? <laughs> well, yes, her Arafat's wife didn't travel with him. Listen, boyo. She was getting her hooves done, be Jesus. <laughs> that's, uh, that's that would be fine. Sorry, Another sad yeah. story McCord reported earlier about that uh, neurosurgeon who operated on the wrong side of some poor sap's brain, be Jesus. No. Right. Didn't yeah. something similar happen to the eye man a few years back? No. When your proctologist mistakenly <laughs> operated on your face, you wrinkle up old jackass, you be Jesus. I think that is harsh and ugly. I tell you what, Mr. Barr. Hurtful. Continues to amaze me well. that anyone would invite the eye man to a bar mitzvah or a wedding, be Jesus. But I tell you what, if you want to do something for, for little Sammy's bar mitzvah that he'll never forget, here's what you do, Mr. Barr. Yeah. You wait till the band starts playing Twist and Shout or the Chicken Dance or some damn thing. No. You quickly put on your Halloween Adolf Hitler mask and you start dancing with Aunt Sherry, boogieing down with Sammy's grandma's be Jesus. <laughs> da, 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 da. They'll talk about you for years, by Jesus. I tell you that, hey, Mr. Mark. <laughs> Which is the belong and why? Oh, this is my favorite part. Of it. Which is the belong and why? It, it was my favorite part with the late Cardinal O'Connor. A, a silver subpoena shredder. A what now? A, what? a, a silver subpoena shredder. A silver subpoena shredder. B, an inanimate humidor. An inanimate humidor. <laughs> no, no, no. Get the holy crap, fella. An inanimate. An inanimate humidor. Well done, fella. Well okay. done. C, a heater for the master bedroom. A Which doesn't belong in Y? A heater for the master bedroom. Which doesn't belong in Y? This is tough. This, this is a tough, tough one. one. Silver subpoena shredder. Right. An, an inanimate, inanimate humidor. humidor. And a uh, heater for the master a bedroom. Big, big heater for the master bedroom. It's cold in that one, but I tell you that. I would say, I would say, B and an animate humidor. And what would McCord say? I'd say a heater for the master bedroom. Wrong, you musty old mutt, you be Jesus. <laughs> yes. Well, all three are gifts, handy gifts for the Clintons in their new Washington home. Yes. <laughs> the answer is B. The inanimate humidor doesn't belong because, unlike the shredder and the bedroom heater, oh, God. the inanimate humidor won't get much use, be Jesus. Keep out the tushes! <laughs> Keep out the tushes! I'm talking about Congressman the the Julius Caesar Watts. Of course, the Florida State wins in their favor. I'm supporting Florida State. I hate to have to admit this to you, but I, I was wavering earlier when thinking about having you on. I thought, well, maybe I should switch my allegiance to the Sooners because Congressman Watts is going to be in and he's on the program on her regularly. So. Well, I, I mean, I, all the times I've watched you, yeah, I'm, I'm shocked that you say you waver. And I've never seen you waver on anything. <laughs> One thing we can get from this show is certainty. <laughs> if your radio sounds funny in the morning, you're listening to Imus in the morning. I don't think you'll see Florida State doing that. I think they're going to dance with the lady that they brought to the dance and that's to try to get pressure on him with you know, five or six people up front and play, you know, man coverage or zone coverage in the secondary and try to win it like that. But You're starting to lose me here with this analysis. <laughs> it just sounds good. I don't know what I'm know. talking about. Me, I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> Just did. Moved up. For Mike's game also. Stuttering John and the Donkey Show every Thursday night. For tickets, go to stutteringjohn.com. Gary Dalabati will be playing hockey with Tim Robbins, Hillary Swank, Jason Priestley, Coop, and George. And was to raise money for the blah, blah, blah. Uh, Christopher Reeve Foundation. Uh, Rangers.com. Tighten this one up, huh? Garden box office. Tickets. Uh, the broad from... Uh, uh, Gross Point. Lindsay Sloan. Lindsay Sloan. Check her out. Sunday night's 9.30. Okay. Benji to judge the new lesbian oral pleasure tournament at myjailcell.com <laughs> and at bookkc, bookkc at aol.com. And for a really great dish jockey for your wedding or Christmas party, call Scott the Engineer at 718-BAG-5040. He's considered one of the best in the business by himself. All right, is that it? All right, we'll see you on Monday. Can't wait to get up early and see you again. <laughs> Saturday night, the TV show, Interim Beauty Pageant, Winfred's Money, and The Man with the Breasts. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, that's the Howard Stern Show. Rock Radio. 92. 3. Rock. This is Rock Radio. Redefined. Love it. Josh Mack. Offspring. Pearl Jam. Anything to declare? Yeah. Some of all that stuff. WFAN, the flagship station for the Amis in the Morning program, weekdays from 5.30 until 10. Well, good evening to you, and 
WIB at 8.05 and 45 seconds on a Friday night on your fan, New York City. Steve Summers here, you there. Kevin Mooney and Saladin McLean there on the other side of the glass. 718-937-6666. The number for a Friday evening schmooze until Joe Beningo at 1. On your van, New York City. First and 10 Giants at the Eagles 31. Again, Collins to the shotgun. Inside handoff goes to Barber. Tiki cuts it back left. There's Barber to the 15, to the 20. Breaks it to the outside, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown! What a run by Barber! And so sorry to report. Five trips in five days to see pro football's biggest game in Tampa, Florida, starting Monday, January 15th with Mike and the Mad Dog. Afternoons on the fan, Sports Radio 66, WFAN, New York. Five, the Owls home tonight to take on the Phoenix Coyotes with reports every 20 minutes. Rich Ackerman, WFAN 2020 Sports. The more you check us out on the web at WFAN.com, the more you'll want to come back. Great audio air clips, the WFAN program schedule, fan van appearances, updated daily polls, and more. On the web, it's WFAN.com. On the radio, it's Sports Radio 66, WFAN New York. Uh, 24 10. All right, 24 10. 11 o'clock, Dan Deardorff will join us in a minute. Don't go away. Sports Radio 66. The fan, WFAN. And that's caught by Tumor. Turns right. He's. WFAN, you're home for Giants playoff football tomorrow at 245. Sports Radio 66. The fan. NFL games all weekend. I love the Raven Titan game. That's a war down in Tennessee. Third time they've played, they split. Danny Deardorff will cover with uh, Dick Emberg, and Dan joins us here on the fan. Dan, thank you very much. Christopher Russo in New York. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm fine, Chris. How are you? I'm doing well, and uh, you were there for that November 12th game when the Ravens had a tremendous win. What a wild game that was, and I would... This is John Minko for the NFL Now. We're coming back with more of Mike Francesa and the NFL Now. On Sports Radio 66, WFAN, New York. Atlantic Mobile. Stop by any one of our communication stores or call 1-800-255-BELL. With wireless savings like these, is it any wonder why summer's the best time of the year? Early t- we can so go. Scott Minion, Scott So. Uh, Donald, uh, I finally got into the bottom of the Joe C situation. I thought I had seen Kid Rock's nasty, diminutive, and sadly deceased fun man running around here. But in actuality, it was merely the viciously surly but sadly still alive ICM agent Lobster Newberg. <laughs> was here on a mission to silence Eminem. Speaking of Marshall Mathers, as the hip hop ripoff, also known as Slim Shady, got here for his sound check, determined to live up to his violent, misogynistic, homophobic image. Immediately upon his arrival, he pistol-whipped Britney Spears and two other guys from NSYNC. But as had been reported earlier, it's all for show, because after the incident was over, I found him in his dressing room on his knees begging for Justin Timberlake's forgiveness. At least, that's what I thought at first. Let's just say after what I saw when it comes to the homophobia, Eminem does protest this too much, if you know what I mean. Billy Gilman's chaperone is somewhat distraught. Apparently, the 12-year-old country singing sensation is missing. Last time I saw him, he was getting into a white stretch limo with a couple of the hookers from Kid Rock's Puna 
behind a posse. The car headed out towards Hollywood Boulevard. He poked his head out the moonroof with this huge grin on his face shouting, I don't know what this lady's doing down there, but I think I just hit puberty. <laughs> if you ask me, come, that's one voice that's about to crack. Oh, hang on. Can we get some confirmation on this? some cheesy restaurant. No, no, no. We got Soleil water still. We still got Soleil yeah. water. The finest effervescent water. And oh, we get the water. flat one, too. And there ain't none of that stuff in it. And you right. come from a mountain uh, spring there and all that. Bear turd free. That's Bear right. Bear free. Yeah, right. Bo's coming up. <laughs> Darling, you sent me. Recall our very fine 37. It starts out innocently enough. You leave buttons unbuttoned, or you put the milk in the pantry and the cereal in the fridge. It gets worse. You make a pot of coffee and you forget the pot. When it gets really bad, you back up to read the signs. In sync, copping to, well. FDR here on the Irish Morning Program. Now from the White House, Bob Kerr of NBC News. Good morning, Mr. Kerr. Good morning, Don. I could see you uh, a few years ago as part of uh, NSYNC. <laughs> Not that way. <laughs> so what's going on there this morning? Well, actually, uh, you're home for the NFC Championship game Sunday at 1230. <laughs> Well, good evening to you. Uh, 
WLUB 9.05, the time on a Tuesday evening on the van, New York City. Steve Summers here, you there, Donald Veritson, Lisa Johnson, Kyle Casey on the other side of the glass. 718-937-6666, the number for a Tuesday schmooze, another hour to go, and then Ed Coleman at 10 right here on your van, New York City. Again, we are all Being little pansies that they, in fact, are. And uh, knuckled under to management over there uh, when they were uh, ordered not to talk about Howard Stern. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we were going to give them... We did offer them the opportunity to appear on this program to say whatever they felt like saying. Right. And uh, they uh, they declined that invitation because their manager over there wouldn't let them. Idiot. So... Unbelievable. You know, just too loudmouth. Yeah. Really, and, I mean, on a serious note, you just can't particularly if you're going to do these kinds of radio programs or whatever, you, you can't, you, 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 you have to refuse to knuckle under to that. You just can't. Kitty babies. It doesn't make any difference who tells you uh, that you can't say something. Uh, you, 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 know, you used to have to say, I'm... Uh, I'm O and A. I'm talking or I'm walking. Yeah. Don't be phony little cowards. And, by, you know, so they reveal themselves to be what, in fact, they are, phony little cowards. And they could easily get another job for five times as much money as they're making, by the way. Not that they had any guts, they'd say whatever they wanted to say about Howard Stern. Sure. So. Who, by the way, is also a whining baby for insisting that they not talk about him. That's where that edict came from, incidentally. I don't know. Then, uh, did you ever talk to the radio chick, Bernie? Negative. So... Uh, they fired her over there. She was awful. And uh, I'm, I've been told, having never, of course, listened, but uh, she had two unfunny losers with her and uh, two Bernie Lou wannabes. And um, so we were going to put her on to see if, in fact, she had uh, any scores to settle. But they're all, they're gutless, hmm. these people. I mean, I can tell you from personal experience, you do get fired. I got fired a couple times and, and threatened several other times. I mean, they will fire you because I got fired for telling them to stick it. But, but you told them. You got to keep it real. You know, I got fired and here I am. So. But that doesn't always work out that way, by the way. I mean, I've been pretty fortunate as well, as you know. 16 after the hour. Well, now, more important than that... Uh, my uh, Deirdre was over at uh, uh, Nike Town. Uh, she's helping the folks up at Mohegan Sun design the new Auto Body Express store. And uh, so she was at some meeting, and she stopped by Nike Town on the way home and uh, made the mistake of calling me. And the late General George S. Patton, Jr. At ease, as you were. All right, let me have your undivided attention. Yeah. I have troubling news. Uh -oh. Our intelligence operatives have detected a deep security transgression in the incipient stages of the incoming Bush administration. What? People, a mole has invaded our transition effort. Oh, my God. And we, you, you, and me, have been charged with the mission of rooting it out. Okay. This thing has managed, somehow, to insidiously ingratiate itself with our new commander-in-chief. Yeah. We have got to stop it. Expose it and eradicate it. Yeah. Fortunately, it hasn't been all that difficult to identify the transgressor yeah. because the bastard's been all over the papers the past several days. Really? Private, fire up the overhead. Yes, sir. Let's go through the latest AP photo dispatches. All right, here we go. This, boys, is the demon itself. Oh, my God, that thing is horrible, sir. At ease, at ease. I agree. Is that Ava Braun, sir? No, no, no. This individual Ava is... Ava Perone? No, if you'll just Florida listen... Secretary of State Catherine Harris with a haircut? No, boys. Far worse than any of that. This thing is Linda Bloodsuck Chavez, a.k.a. La Cucaracha. I'm begging the general's pardon, sir, but hell, that ain't no mole. That there's a warthog. <laughs> Agreed and a particularly odious warthog who is trying to reintroduce to the United States the repugnant institution of enslaved Guatemalan towel boys and girls yeah. by becoming the next Secretary of Labor. What? 
Unhappily, our president-elect, who is the clear result of shaken baby syndrome, yeah. lacks the intellectual capacity to figure out anything that's going on, yeah, that's right. including the fact that Senorita Chavez withheld the critical information from him that she is trying to undermine our country by sanctioning a wholesale illegal immigrant invasion. <laughs> While I don't want to overstate the case, we now wonder whether Ms. Chavez herself is in this country legally or by means of some three-card Monty alien Gonzalez scam. Good point, sir. The sad fact is that it really doesn't make any difference. No, it don't. With the incoming Bush administration under heavy attack from every quarter, this is one hit it simply can no longer absorb. No, sir. Therefore, our mission is clear. Would you enunciate it for us, please, Private? Yes, sir. Clear, sir. She's gonna have to go. I can't hear you. I said enunciate the policy for us, Private. Gotta can the girl, sir. That's it. Ain't no other way. Cause, see, if you was just a little... What are you, son? A Palm Beach ballot puncher? Mm -hmm. Sound off like you were swinging something down there other than a couple of hanging chads. Sir, before the bitch takes down George W. Bush and everybody else, she's gotta withdraw and then shove both her nomination and that superior attitude she's got up her own nanny knocking, vassal victimizing, morally bankrupt, beat burrito butt, sir! Wordy, a tad discursive, but you did manage to convey meaning. And I might add, exactly right, Private. I will conclude by relating to you, maggots, a memorandum I am sending to the Labor Secretary designate on behalf of the Bush transition team. Dear Miss Chavez, before your nomination starts a confirmation route, Join that Taco Bell Chihuahua and get the friggin' hell out! Thank you for your attention, boys. That is all. <laughs> that was a good one, sir. Very ugly situation, but we, one would hope it, you know, helped precipitate what, what ultimately did happen later in the afternoon. Right. Right. 18 till the hour. Here's Mike from New Jersey on line two. Good morning, Mike. That wasn't nearly as painful as that eight minutes of listening to those morons arguing with each other. I was looking forward to Crazy Bob again. <laughs> I was begging for Al Rosenberg and Mr. T. Please bring them back. Please. The conversation between mackerel and steak. Oh, my God, I almost drove into a bridge abutment before you told me to. They are t tedious, aren't they? Oh, please. I didn't know what was worse, the first guy that came on or those two morons arguing with each other. Well, the fat guy from Providence, the gangster. Oh, yeah. God. Well, steak's going to do sports tomorrow, you know. That should be real good. Well, I mean, don't, don't you agree? And I just try to be serious and be objective here for a second. Don't you agree that steak has got to come up big tomorrow? Steak is big, isn't he? <laughs> no, but I mean, he's got to produce tomorrow. I, I I agree. I don't think he's capable of it, though. No, I don't either. <laughs> but uh, we're, we're so, in a... Well, so why don't we get the guy from Providence to do sports? He seemed real intelligent. Well, I mean, you know, it's just you're trading one meathead for another. So we have a, At least we have a relationship with Steak. Well, we probably have as much of a relationship as, <laughs> as with the guy in Providence, a fat Tom from Providence, so... <laughs> but I mean, it will be fun to just uh, to to delight in uh, his agony, probably. in uh, Steak's agony tomorrow because he will suck. Oh, you, you you've got to have Mike Francesa call up. You've got to. I suspect he'll suck. Okay. I, he could surprise us. Yeah, but please have Francesa call up because there's nothing better than that. <laughs> and Steak trying to rip that's own uh, Fruit Loops. That's that's there's nothing better. That's pathetic. I agree. Yeah. Morning, McDonald's. Hi, uh, McDonald's hamburgers. Yes, it is. Uh, <clears throat> this is Sergeant Kirkland of the Air National Guard, and I'd like to uh, get 1,200 hamburgers. 12? Twelve? Pardon me, sir? 12, 1,200 hamburgers is what we'd like to get. Just a moment. I'm going to have to ask my... <clears throat> Just, could you hold on for yeah, some? I can, yeah, Sergeant, fine. just a moment, sir. There's a guy here... I miss in the morning. All right, let me talk to you now about... online, Lou? That is correct. Well, this is a pretty good deal, actually. It's a new internet hookup that's 100 times faster than your dial-up service. If you're sick of taking all night to download stuff, and they can do it literally seconds. In fact, you click on it, your printer kicks on. That's how quick it is. It's unbelievable. Photographs, all, I mean, it's unbelievable. If you're a CableVision customer, Optimum Online is already in your home. Because it's, it's, this deal is delivered over the same wire that carries your cable TV, so it's fast, 100 times faster, as I said, than any dial up internet service. It's also uh, up to four times faster than DSL. What am I talking about here? Optimum Online 
You'll never want to go back to the old-fashioned this Well, of course you wouldn't. Did you? No. No, Ray, you're not going to kill me. Oh, that's right. I'm going to get two of my friends to kill you. <laughs> sword. Huh? <laughs> Maybe it'd be on tomorrow. Oh, okay. Well, Ray Carouf. Uh, Ray Carouf could be. We could have Ray Lewis and Ray Carouf, could you? That trial still going on in Ray Carouf trial? Yes, it is. Why don't you take him so long? Well, they're taking testimony from uh, the hitman and, you know, character references. It's a weird deal, isn't it? Yes, it is. This is WFAN in New York and Infinity and Broadcasting Station, part of the Viacom Empire. Time for a little news now, and here with that is my friend Charles McCord, who has maybe the worst haircut he's ever had. I don't know. Hey. Man, I don't know what the hell happened there. Are you Supercuts doing? having a sale on haircuts? He goes to uh, some cheesy hair deal. It's not a cheesy hair deal. He gets an $11 haircut. Yeah, it went up. <laughs> this is evidence. They just raise their prices. You step on the barber's C and I dog on the way in. This is evidence of what happens when you do that. So you just <clears throat> he comes out looking like. Um, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And you wonder what the person is thinking about. I mean, it's not the first time they ever cut Chuck's hair, you know. They apparently cut it all the time, right? Yeah. yeah. Same person. Yeah. yeah. Man, woman, woman. Okay. And she just oh, okay, having a bad day. Said, well, let's, yeah. let's, let's screw Chuck. Drug test that hole. <clears throat> Drug test what, that hole. What? No. No. Where, 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 where does that come from? The hair hole. They cut his hair. Jeez. <laughs> I, I know. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, look at it. Get it? Where's that mic down when you talk on? Well, I am looking at it. That's the point. I don't know what happened. Like, something's not right. No idea what As happened. you said, a bad day. Everybody has them. But, I mean, you got to know. I mean, I got to suffer. You got to know what you're doing. Can't you put a stocking on, Chuck? <laughs> yeah, I could. All right, here's Chuck with a little news. All right, I'm in. Uh, locally, if you take the N and or the R train oh, yeah, okay. uh, during your commute, yeah. you're familiar with I'm in, you've got a series of here. new detours to navigate. <laughs> what is it now? I'll, I'll, wait, I'll wait a minute while you got your get your pad yeah, down. Yeah, i got it. The, okay. The N or R. Right. right. <laughs> Renovations are just underway that have closed a number of stations. Right. You got that? Mm -hmm. Creating a real hassle. Got that? Right. For folks who have to travel past their destinations and then backtrack. If they had more signs about it, you don't know until you're there, and if you're going to an appointment, it can be a problem. So the renovations on the uptown side of the N for Nancy and uh, R for resignate lines will continue until the 18th of March, and then the work moves to the downtown side. So How about these new it? subway trains? I read something about the RU-142s or whatever they are. RU-486. <laughs> <laughs> you heard about them? Yeah, what about them? How many of those are running? Not enough. Really? <laughs> no, not enough to satisfy the <laughs> I-man during the I-man's commute. Well, what do I tell you? <laughs> I'm the Morning News Time coming up on three minutes past the hour. The word's out. There's a big-time Super Sunday party planned at your home on Sunday, January. Well, it looks good. It looks good. He hasn't killed any pregnant girlfriends that we know about. Dave Sims? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> why, why would you even why suggest would you say that? Because we were just speaking about it. No, yeah, but, but why would you... Well, why would that come into your mind? That's why it came into my mind. Hey, he's doing very well. Dave Sims, a sportscaster. Yeah. We love Dave. Yes, we do, but I mean... Uh, <laughs> just, oh, God. I don't know, it's just... Here's Chuck with the morning. I don't know, let's do some spots, God. Born through a 
party in the county jail. And uh, anyway, so what's the matter? Why are you looking at me? Well, I just, over the past 48 hours, I've just tried to speculate on what in the hell happens in your feeble mind to cause these utter cataclysms of rage happen over nothing, over absolutely nothing. Well, I'm, I've gotten better, though, don't you think? No, not at all. I haven't gotten any better no, over the no, years. No, you haven't. You've, you've got just, better for a little while. Yeah, you did. And now you've reverted right back, back to the old... Uh, you're right back. It's I the, have. The yeah. honeymoon... Literally and figuratively are over. If your radio sounds funny in the morning, you're listening to Imus in the morning. I admit that I have sometimes lose my temper. What the, can we move on with this? I admit that. Well, what's wrong? Nothing. Nothing at all. Well, I've admitted it. You're fine. I'm going to try to work on it. What more do you want, Bernard? There's, there's nothing more you can do. Answer me, you bald-headed <laughs> geek. <laughs> I want you to pass away. Please. No, you don't want Pretty me to. Yes, that, that sums it up. Yes, we do. Nothing, anything short of that is not satisfactory. I just, uh, but, I mean, I, I don't see how that solves anything. You people wishing me dead. How does that solve anything? I, I don't know that it does. It probably doesn't. <laughs> in the morning. veterinarian isn't easy. Once a shepherd walked in... It's just the other morning I was hanging around in my house I had that new book with pictures of Madonna naked and I was checking it out She'd never pegged me for a scumbag before She said she didn't never want to see me anymore And I still don't know why I think I'm an alright guy I think I'm an alright guy I just want to live until I've got to die I know I ain't perfect, but God knows I try I think I'm an alright guy the pole I know I get wild and I know I get drunk but it ain't like I've got a bunch of bodies in my trunk my old man used to call me a no good punk and I still don't know why I think I'm an alright guy I think I'm an alright guy I just want to Pulled me over outside of a bar. They turned on their lights and they said, Hey, kid, get out of the car. Man, I was the only kid when I called them a couple of dicks. But still, they made me do the stupid human tricks. Now I'm stuck in this jail with a bunch of dumb hicks, and I still don't know why. I think I'm. I think I'm an all right guy. I think I'm all right. I think I'm an all right guy. I think I'm all right. Yes, I think I'm all right. Like his attitude, don't you? <laughs> Todd uh, Snyder, is that the kid's name? That's right. <laughs> Look, I'm all right guy. Okay now. A little dirty, smoke a lot of dope. Yep. Called them two pigs a couple of dicks, but I won't do. 
That's the opening bell of the New York Stock Exchange, sponsored by buyandhold.com. You used to be able to trade for $2.99 a cent trade. Now you can trade all month for $9.99. The Dow down 53 points in three, the first three and a half minutes of the opening. Great. Session NASDAQ down 53 as well. Lovely. Um, uh, time for Crazy Al to... Well, I don't know. So, <clears throat> not good. Andy Rooney was on earlier this morning. He was great, running. He? Absolutely. Uh, How long was that interview? Terrific. Twelve minutes, something like uh, that? Longer? About that, 13 minutes. A little minutes. more. Oh, I love Andy Rooney. Almost 15. Oh, it was? Yeah. Damn. Huh. You could talk to him all morning, though. You could indeed. You're a little jerk, you know that? Oh, oh, no, no, no. I loved it. I thought he was great. Oh, okay. How can you not like Andy Rooney? Do we have time to replay it? Yeah, we got to go to commercials now, and we'd have a shot. Okay. You know, I couldn't wear my gun last night, Bo. Why? Uh, I don't know. It won't fit under my tuxedo. You know, I got a let's move this story. Okay. Do you know, Les? Uh, yeah. Am, yeah. I, am, I, am I right about this? Well, let, let me you got to you take know. a shower after you talk to this guy. He's a very nice guy when you meet him outside of the office. He's, he actually, he's one of your guys. I can see that. He yeah. can hang with the bow anytime. Can't you see that, Charles? He's a posse. I can see uh, Leslie Moonves, Joey Potts and Pans, uh, Steve Whitkoff, <laughs> Chuck Schumer, Donald Trump, Al Gore, and you. <laughs> at an Agassi match. Uh, yeah, at an Agassi <laughs> match. <laughs> With Puff Daddy there. With Puff Daddy, absolutely. And Johnny Cochran. If your radio sounds funny in the morning, you're listening to Imus in the morning. You think either May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? Snoop Dogg in the Hat House. For real, Slim Shady, your career's about to blow up. For real, Slim Shady, your career's about to blow up. Y'all got a problem here. You know you got a whole lot more than you should, cause y'all ain't that good. Cause it's understood you were cracking at a homeboy from the hood. Even though your blonde hair do inspire Tiger Woods. You just a phony with your false acrimony. Front like a gangster, cause Dre is your crony. Feminists, homosexuals hate Eminem, but chicken, chicken, everybody's sick of him. Cashing in the animal instinct, just cause Britney and NSYNC. Backstreet boys all stink. So what do you think? You be around longer than them? Don't blink. Being outrageous and offensive ain't enough to suffice. Vice. It's a roll of the, the dice. dice, don't believe me? Two words, vanilla ice. Right now the critics are enamored, but don't get used to the glamour. Cause you're gonna wind up just like MC Hammer. You're on an ego trip, you're on an ego trip. But soon your fame is gonna slip right through your fingertips. You achieve notoriety with bold and propriety. Condemn a sobriety, blaming your anxiety on the rest of society. But you just a punk of the garden variety. Yo, 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 Dre, give me some more bass. I'm about to rock this place. Meanwhile, you're a lady outside sucking face. You always talk about killing your Ride, take her for a ride, but instead of living with you, she better commit suicide. Cause when I had that hoe, it was the only time that bitch you ever satisfied. Get real slim shady, for real slim shady, cause here's the deal, shady, you just aggravate. So won't you slim shady, just please blow up, please blow up, please blow up. Get real slim shady, for real slim shady, cause here's the deal, shady, you just aggravate. So won't you slim shady, just please blow up, please blow up, please blow up. Give props to the rappers who went first Copying everything they did chapter and verse Acting perverse This is Will Smith cause he prefers not to curse But have no fear he'll still be here when your career's in a hearse So matter matters you ain't no match You know you can't scratch You all ain't nothing but a punk ass biatch Dre is your savior he gives you a waiver Despite the fact you're just another white boy with, with no, no flavor Do your best to shock but you lame with a new kids on the block Losing both your AMAs to Dre and Kid Rock And those nominations for all of them Grammys Ain't no compensation for that bitter for Jimmy and your jammies. You bite my style, but how did you figure that grabbing your crotch would make it get bigger? There will always be something missing from your equation. The wrong persuasion. Can't lay the cut straight, still stay a Caucasian. Snoop Dogg say a move over, Rover. You know what's real slim shady? Your 15 minutes is over. Get real slim shady, for real slim shady. Cause here's the deal, shady, you just aggravate. So won't you slim shady, just please blow up. Please blow up, please blow up. Slim Shady for real, Slim Shady, cause here's the deal, Shady, you just aggravate so won't you Slim Shady, just please blow up, please blow up, please blow up. Yeah, 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 you bite the door, keep bite your ass back, boy, Snoop Dogg in the house, keeping it real all up in this mother. On the Imus in a morning program, and it's 23 after the hour. Mary Matlin is coming up. We're going to talk to her. She recently left CNN. Big article in Wall Street Journal this morning about the uh, 
Well, at CNN, they just had to turn it upside down because after Rick Kaplan was there, nearly decimated the place. God almighty, well, whose well, idea was that to bring that loser in there? Grief. And he did as exactly we predicted he would do. Play or who shouldn't play? Hello, uh, Stakey? Oh, Stank. <laughs> back to that you. That would be back to you now. thought that cut had a little more juice to it. But, uh, well, no, the, actually, the cut fairness, had no juice. In fairness to Marconi Award winner Mike Francesa, I'm in. He was forced to lower the boom on Coach Parcells a bit later on in a contentious exchange. Other than going to Florida and uh, trying to hit the ball straight, what, what, what are the plans? I have none. That's the truth. I haven't talked to anybody. And there's been reports. I've been talking to people on television. I haven't done that. I've been too busy. I haven't even talked to anybody. I mean, I've been in here trying to help finish up this job here. If by finishing the job you mean watching your team tank their season away, having a head coach ditch you for the chance to coach in Charlottesville, Virginia, and cleaning out your desk, then Big Bill, you certainly have been real busy. Virginia Tech's Michael Vick will forego his last two years of college football and has announced he will make himself available for the NFL draft, leaving the hotbed that is Blacksburg, Virginia, is going to be tough. Made a little easier by the fact Vic's going to make millions as the first pick in the draft. You know, this That's pathetic an effort to know, annoy me Michael by attacking Vick. my friend Mike Francesa and by Did extension, you hear the question? his friend Bill Parcells is outrageous. That is not Did you working. hear the question? You, you are so envious of Mike Francesa and by extension, Bill Parcells, that it is uh, pathetic. It, it's embarrassing. Why don't you? All I can say to you is play the bit. Mike, play the bit Mike, and ask Mike, the people there. Mike Francesa is what is the preeminent sports talk figure in America, and you're not, Mike, and you can't stand it. Mike Francesa is the biggest overblown, overinflated, overeating egomaniac <laughs> that has ever graced the radio airwaves. I greatly resent that minute. and demand that you apologize. <laughs> and I demand that you play the bit. If you play the bit, play what and let bit? The people speak. Play the bit about Francesa. It's funny. The bit that you sent up here. The bit is a funny That's bit. That's Connecticut Broadcasting School material. We're not playing seconds. lame comedy bits with your with your pathetic attempt to attack my friend on this radio program. <laughs> if for no other reason than just not to embarrass you any more than you've embarrassed yourself, this has been this has been beyond abysmal this morning. Go you, talk to Nina Totenberg. You were a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, see if Arthur Miller's available. Oh, that's a cheap shot. Why don't we do a... Why, don't we now, do why a couldn't a motorboat run over you, you ball-headed bastard? Oh. Why don't a shark More eat news. you? Or why don't you More eat me? Out of, the, out of the debacle that is the New York Jets. A savior may be coming for frustrated New Yorkers. Daily News is reporting, as I did, Boomer Esiason is interested in the vacated general manager position. I have an affinity for the Jets, and I quote, I'm not actively pursuing it, but if contacted, I'm close enough to know that what is going on is a place I can help. In a related story, another IMAS icon, Warner Wolf, has offered up his services for the tumultuous Secretary of Labor position next to George Bush. In other words, Boomer, get out of your fantasy land and be happy the I-Man still lets you on the radio. It ain't happening, brother. <laughs> Stakes are pearl live in Atlanta here on the IMAS in the morning program. All right, let me talk to you about uh, TechnoZone from the Jamal Brothers. I met with the Jamal Brothers, by the way, in my office, and uh, I'm here to report that I actually came out of the meeting still with my watch and wallet. <laughs> Jesus, what a couple of slime balls. But um, they have this thing called the TechnoZone. Uh, what the hell is it called, Charles? Uh, the Techno AO. Techno AO. Oh, it's this thing you stick on your cell phone that's supposed to combat electromagnetic radiation. Yeah. And I don't have any idea if it works or not. They have a bunch of literature and data that suggests that it does. But um, I think it does. So if I think it does and I put it on my phone, well, what harm could it do? We put one on Deidre's phone, so... See, obviously, I wouldn't want anything to happen to her, so... Uh, my recommendation is that you put it on the phone. Well, if it works, then we're home free. If it doesn't, well, we got screwed. You wake up in 20 years, you have a brain tumor and a green uh, wiener. So what are you going to do? 1-800-993-4260. Probably works. It probably works. They have a deal for your monitor your uh, of your uh, computer. I have one right about two feet from me here. 18 inches. 
1-800-993-4260. Call and get this stuff. Big sale going on 10 bucks off each of them. That's what I'm saying. You uh, suffer from fatigue or depression. Has the aging process diminished your quality of life? In other words, uh, if you have, are you walking around with a limp wiener? <laughs> well, uh, for a lot of people, these symptoms are due to a decline in testosterone levels. Call Dr. Raphael Kelman at the Kelman Center for Progressive Medicine and Throbbing Boners at 212-532-0600, where he offers new methods utilizing, utilizing both alternative and conventional medicine to effectively treat these symptoms, a limp noodle. Due to recent advances in both natural and traditional medicine, uh, Dr. Kelman's hormonal modulation program can raise your, well, limp noodle and your testosterone levels and help you regain your vitality if you understand what the eye man is saying. Oh, have mercy, baby. We're going to go all night long. But call the Kelman Center for Progressive Medicine at 212-532-0600 if you are sitting there with a limb noodle. Oh, you don't need that. You don't need no limp noodle. What the hell are you talking about? You don't need no limp noodle. Call the doctor. <laughs> 212 532 Say, doctor, fix my limb noodle. <laughs> Another landmark near our clothing store has gone out of business. Good. The business casual uh, mon mantra that uh, permeated business offices, and, you know, casual Friday, casual Thursday, oh, yeah. casual Wednesday, and pretty soon nobody's wearing suits anymore. For 70 years, uh, oh, is he down there at Gorsart has been... <laughs> have been selling these suits to stockbrokers, judges, and lawyers. <laughs> they rarely advertise, dumb bastards. So that's why they're going out of business now. But a lot of New Yorkers knew Gorsart strictly from word of mouth. And they're there on Murray Street down near City Hall. And they got this big suit sale and all the other stuff they have there. And they're going out of business. Well, they got to get rid of this stuff. Half off, some even more. Gorsart will be open Monday through... Friday, 9.30 to 6, Saturday, 10 to 5, Sunday, 10 to 3. MasterCard and Visa accepted. Sale ends January 31st. That's the sound of a dead car. It sounds like about 1,200 bucks.